Hey y'all, this video will be a Bible study about pornography. What does the Bible have to say about porn? <laughs> Most people would say, the Bible never talks about porn. Yeah, it does. Um, Jesus said, I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So, porn is technically adultery. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Don't get obsessed with porn. You should be obsessed with your mate. A lot more than porn. <clears throat> and yeah, the problem with porn is that it can make you dissatisfied with whoever you're with. It raises your expectations. And then you, ex and then you expect more. And then you're not happy. You're less content with the way that your life is because your life probably is not just like a porn video. Um, so it's just better to avoid porn altogether. Flee from sexual morality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Glorify God in your body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and if you think of temples, they were very sacred, holy. Yeah. Um, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will let not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with any temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. A way of escape. <clears throat> so don't worry about feeling like it's out of your control or you have to do that certain sin. No, you don't. God will give you a way of escape. Okay. Yeah, so then you're kind of without excuse if you say, I had no choice. No, you did. Technically, God probably will always, has always and will always give you a way of escape to get out of any tempting situation that you might be in so that you will not sin. Um, David said, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Is it worthless? Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, it's worthless. You know why? Because the people in the porn videos aren't going to do anything for you. So why are you wasting your time looking at them and watching them, you know? Yeah, you're never going to meet those people. Obviously. <clears throat> for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And... Um, the Bible also says, you know, if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. You can't love God and the world. You have to pick one. Um, let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Yep. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral per the moral person sins against his own body. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Woot. Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, big brings forth death hmm. yeah watch out for, for porn I remember reading once that even like uh, maybe half of pastors in America struggle with looking at porn obviously that's not good you shouldn't do that can you say that you're a Christian and watch porn I don't know I guess you could say that it's a gray area I feel like um, if you're excessive in the amount of time that you watch porn, then it's an issue. 
you know, I think it's better to just avoid it altogether. It's be and it's, it's really weird if you think about it. It's kind of like playing God because, you know, only God should be able to see all of us humans have sex, which he can. So then, yeah, if we watch porn, it's kind of like we're pretending like we're God and we can see everybody doing everything. Is that good? Probably not. Yeah, and maybe it can lead to depression because we were not meant to see everything that God sees. Right? No. No, we were not. Um, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. <clears throat> First John. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. You know that he appeared, Jesus appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who abides in him, in Jesus, keeps on sinning. That's interesting, isn't it? No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Oh, that's hard hitting right there. Yeah, I know I've read this several times in the past. <laughs> this is something pastors never say. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. So you can't really say that you're Christian if you keep on sinning. <sighs> yeah, so many, it's just, uh, in our modern church, there's like the grace theology, the grace mentality, grace teaching, you can do whatever you want, God's just a squishy little teddy bear and he's going to forgive you. It's kind of like, yeah, we're superimposing maybe the way that our parents were, some people, you know, that you could do whatever and your parents would just be like, oh, it's okay, I still love you anyways. No discipline, no punishment, you know, spoiled children. I was disciplined. I remember getting spanked. I remember being put on time out. I remember my mom being very strict with me. And I don't, I would not say that I was spoiled, but, um, yeah. <laughs> so I understand that God is a just God, that he's not just going to let us get away with murder, with anything, you know, he has expectations for us and, um, we have to be careful how we live. We can't just do anything and think that God will forgive us no matter what. You know, why, why should we assume that God will just forgive us no matter what we do? You know? You never know. My ex-husband said to me, do you think that I'll make it to heaven? Or he was like, do you think that I can be saved? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know how much grace God is willing to have with someone. But he was always saying that. Do you think that I'll make it? <laughs> do you think God can save me? I, uh, he actually had a pretty bad porn addiction. Um, I don't know how many hours per day he watched it, but I think it was like multiple hours per day. And what really took the cake for me was when he finally told me that he was watching porn. <laughs> I was thinking, oh my goodness, all those hours that you were probably missing sleep watching porn, you should have been out in the living room hanging out with me and our kids and you were just watching porn instead. <sighs> it's definitely a stealer of time, energy, effort, desire. Any desire that you should have for your mate is gone because you desire the people in porn. You know, and then yeah, if you're spending hours and hours watching that stuff, like, that's like your world. And those people in the porn videos are your boyfriends and girlfriends, you know. And then you have, probably, you have no more room in your heart, no more emotional desire capacity for your mate, you know, the person that you live with. 
the person that's there in person. I know one guy, his testimony was that when he stopped watching porn, then he had so much desire for his wife, and he was so happy about that. So that's good. Anyway, so if you watch it, I encourage you to quit. Just like quitting drinking or smoking or anything, you know. It'll take some discipline, but you'll be proud of yourself. And, um, like, I quit smoking a month ago, and I'm proud of myself. And I don't miss it. And I'm, you know, I can't believe I... I can't believe I was suckered for that long by Satan, you could say. To think that it was a good thing to do. And hopefully you'll feel the same way about porn if you quit. Hopefully you'll say, I can't believe I was suckered by Satan for that long. And thought that that was a good idea. Because it's not. Anyways, good love, y'all. God bless. Bye.